I'm a little nervous because this is probably going to be painful. <sighs> hello, hello, hello. My name is Nakia. Welcome to my channel. We're doing something a little bit different today. I'm being a glutton for punishment, for your amusement, for your entertainment. You're welcome. <laughs> I have seen a few people do this video, but you know, I was like, I don't know if I can do that. I don't know if I can handle it, but I decided to brave the things for you and I'm gonna do it. I was looking for something fun to do for this video and I was like, you know what? We just gonna do it, it's gonna be fun. So, disclaimer real quick. These comments are gonna come from Goodreads. I'm gonna try to like mix them up or whatever, but you know, if you know any of these people or you recognize a comment or you know, you wanna go look, Please don't leave them any negative feedback or anything like that. We're gonna keep things positive. That's what we're here for. Also, you know, I definitely don't wanna put any negativity out there for these authors because I'm actually here to praise them <laughs> despite what the negative reviews say. So again, this is all in good fun, all in love. So um, yeah, I think that's about it. Let's just get into it. Now, I picked 10 of my favorite books. I have a ton, so I will do another one of these later on down the line, but for today, I picked 10 of my favorite books that, you know, a lot of these have my heart. So again, I did this so it could be the most painful possible. <laughs> and we are gonna start with Still House Lake by Rachel Kane. If you are new here, this was like a five-star read for me. I read it in, I think 2020, I even purchased it and I don't buy many books, but I have a copy of it, physical copy on my shelf, so. This one's probably really gonna be painful, but let's just do it. Oh my Lord. <laughs> okay, first review. This was God awful. The writing is the worst I have ever read. Ah, the worst, excuse me. <laughs> okay, woo. It felt like someone's first effort at creative writing. Oh my God, I beg to differ. I beg to differ. Clearly I do. Um, Like I said, I disagree. I loved Rachel Kane's writing. It was easy breezy. Let's move on to another one. This one says, I'm having terrible luck finding good thrillers lately. There was so much repetition. Gwen is doing this to protect her kids. She's doing that to protect her kids. She has to protect her kids. Yes, we get it. Once or twice is enough. And the whole, should we run or shouldn't we? I have to protect my kids, but we're happy. I need to protect their happiness. Okay, okay. <laughs> With this review, did you not know what book you were getting into? It's on the back in the synopsis. <laughs> okay, let's move on. Next one. Ugh, this book is terrible. Predictable plot, no character development. The main character repeats the same narrative in her mind over and over again. Okay, this seems to be a theme. Everybody thinks she's being repetitive. Did I miss something? Did I read the same book? Because I didn't feel that way. <sighs> that hurt. Let's move on to my next book, shall we? <laughs> All right, next, we're gonna move on to Binti by Nettie Okorafor. This was my first venture into sci-fi, I think. I think I read this before The Martian. This was also five stars for me. I read this in one sitting, which I have not done since. This is the only book I've done this with, so. Let me brace myself. Oh, and I didn't say, I picked all one star reviews, unless there was a book that I really couldn't find one stars and I'll go to two, but these are all one star reviews, so the worst people thought of these books. And this one says, I can't believe this won a Hugo and Nebula Award. Apparently this is supposed to be a science fiction novella offering a protagonist from an African background who is a genius at mathematics and leaves her tribe to go to Umza University on another planet. Unfortunately, I found this book to be tiring and boring, the writing bland. Boring. Okay, I said this when I talked about this book. This was a page turner for me from start to finish. I don't understand how this was boring to someone. Like the very beginning, like maybe two pages were a little bit like, but you gotta get stuff started. Get, get things introduced. Boring? No, writing was completely not bland for me. I I don't, I don't get it, okay, wow. This next one I just gotta read for fun. A coworker recommended this to me. I hate this coworker now. <laughs> That's funny, but wow. Here's another one where people have an issue with the awards. OMG, this one won the Hugo and Nebula Award. I don't have a freaking idea how big deal those awards are, but if this is the kind of winner novella they produce, then I guess, nope, they don't sound prestigious to me. Binti is a dumb story. 
literally unbelievable, not unbelievable, it's awesome, but unbelievable this kind of crap actually won awards. Wow, wow, some people are just mean. Why are people so mean? Oh my word. I clearly didn't think the story was dumb. I thought it was very imaginative. It's sci-fi, so it's supposed to be unbelievable. This is not a sci-fi that's grounded in reality. We're talking about space and aliens. <sighs> okay, let's move on to another book, shall we? Because <laughs> this video will be 50 years long if I just keep going and going with one thing. Let's see, I'm trying to mix it up with the genres. So we did thriller and sci-fi. Let's move on to horror. Now this one has my heart. If you've been watching my channel for a while, this book was featured in the background for a long time. And then I switched it up and put some other things back there. I also reread some stories from it this Halloween and I'm speaking of Scary Stories to Tell in the Dark by Alvin Schwartz. Now, I wasn't really gonna do any middle grade books in this video. But this one I, I couldn't resist because again, this is a classic. So it's, it's, you know, it's had enough time passed and I had to know what people had to say because how could you not like this book? <laughs> well, let's find out. Okay, someone said, I really hate this book. It's not even scary at all. Scare, where's your grammar? Scary? Well, it's stupid and not scary. And really, who are they really, this writing, who are they really trying to convince? Really, if you wanna read it, you're gonna have this comment, but really just don't read it all. What am I supposed to say to this? If you could see this grammar, it's just terrible. Like, they just seem like they were just trying to hate. It was stupid and not scary. I can also see this as at least a teenager and older. It's maybe not for you. <laughs> Moving on. Wow. This person said, I read all three books in one sitting, and if I'm being honest, I didn't like a single story in any of them. How dare you? How dare you? Wow. Some of the comedic stories got a small chuckle out of me. If you chuckled, that sounds like you liked it. But the actual horror stories weren't even mildly creepy in my opinion, not even by toddler standards. Did you read this to a toddler? Did you? Okay. Not only were they not creepy, I just thought they were written very poorly. We're done here. Excuse me. Excuse me. If you don't know, I know I said we're done here, but these are folklore retellings. So he didn't write them. He just made them a little more current. But anyway, I digress. Somebody put hot take. Ew. I'm super glad I never read this when I was a kid. Sound a little immature to me. <laughs> Why are these comments so immature? Is it because it's a middle grade book? Someone else said, I forgot how stupid these books are. Thank you for your well thought out thoughts. Thank you. You're really helping the community. <laughs> anyway, uh, let's end on this one. They weren't scary, at least for a 17 year old, but I guess they would really freak out the younger readers. Overall, really entertaining. Okay. This is the kind of review that irks me. If you think it could be entertaining for a younger reader and you're 17, why'd you give it one star? Just don't review it, don't rate it. <sighs> Let's move on, shall we? Um, all of these have a special place in my heart, most of them, because they're favorites. But this one, I am tired of saying this. Sometimes when I edit a video where I say this, I'm like, are you saying this again? And this, I hope, will be one of the last times. <laughs> but this book, it's the reason I have this channel. It got me back into reading and I loved it. I'm speaking of Lock Every Door by Riley Sager. So let's just get into it. First one, are you freaking kidding me? They didn't say freaking. I'm trying to keep it clean. Unpopular opinion below. They say the good, high level of tension and suspense. Here we go again. If you have something good to say, why is this a one star review? The bad, everything else. I guess that answers that. The protagonist, to put it kindly, she is not the brightest bulb, yet she is the one to put the pieces of the mystery together. The mystery, beyond ridiculous. The narrative, all telling, no seeing. The ending, I have no words. Okay, um, to me, when you get into a mystery book, the main character is usually gonna be someone that just like figures things out and there's no reason why. We're not following a detective, we're following a regular person and you have to suspend disbelief. Just go along with it. If you're not willing to do that, don't read. Here's another one. This person said, boo, boo. I am really not into the writing. It's too overt. Another reviewer put it really well saying, all telling, no seeing. I just read that review. <laughs> it's overkill. I'm only 20% through and don't know that I can continue reading. Okay, this is another thing I don't get because I don't do this. Why do people review when they're not done with a book? How can you review when you're not done? Either DNF it and then put it as a DNF or finish reading it and then review it. 
Let's move on. Okay, this is the last one, Marie. This was boring and the plot twists were eye roll worthy. Boring? Okay. Every chapter left off on a cliffhanger from what I remember. And also we go in between the present and the past. And in the present, she's in a hospital and you don't know why she's there and what's going on, the main character. And they're short chapters. So what's boring about that? What are you reading this entertaining? Cause I mean, that's boring to you? Okay. By the end, I was emotionally distracted and skipping portions of the audiobook. Ah, ha ha. Maybe that's why. The audiobook. Cause I read it physically, so maybe that's why. The main character was boring. Scratch that. Everyone was boring. Okay. Once again, this is going to be a theme in this video. I clearly didn't read the same book. I did not think the main character was boring. If I think a main character is boring, I'm putting the book down. I found her fine. I enjoyed her point of view. I didn't think anybody was boring. Let's move on. Let's go to another horror book. All right, this next one um, is a smaller book, like not as well known. So I had to go to two star reviews because it doesn't really have a lot of reviews and I think a lot of people didn't want to be mean. So this one is Petrified Women by Jeremy Ray. I think I gave this like four stars, four and a half, something like that. <sighs> Let's do it. So this one says, I'm skipping some of the spoilery stuff. Uh, they said the wooden statues and the pranks weren't my thing. It felt a bit forced and didn't make sense to me at times. But if you're wanting to dip your toes into the horror genre, I think you can definitely read this. Now, I mean, this was a two and a half star, but if the wooden statues and the pranks, this is what I just don't get with people. It, <laughs> do people not read the synopsis? I know some of you don't, but the cover, there's a wooden woman. And then the pranks, that's in the synopsis. Anyway, let's move on. Oh my God. Here we go again with, it was a good short story, straight to the point. Two stars. What is wrong with some people? This is the last one we read on this. Cause this one, like I said, didn't have a lot of re reviews. So a lot of negative reviews anyway, not a lot of reviews in total compared to other authors. So this is the last one. I felt like there were a lot of plot holes and the pranks just didn't really do it for me. Everything seemed kind of forced. It didn't seem real. Something was just missing for me. I did enjoy the spooky statues part though. It's horror, so I mean, you can do whatever you want. It doesn't need to necessarily be real. Like, I don't like the realistic horror stuff, like serial killers and stuff like that. So when you get into a book like this, that's like supernatural type of things, it's not gonna be realistic. Let's move on. <laughs> Which one do I wanna do next? It's gonna be painful. Let's go with Finley Donovan is killing it. I believe that's the first one. I'm, I'm on the second one right now, so I'm a little bit like, am I talking about the right one? Yes. Finley Donovan is killing it. I'm just gonna read this one, the end of this, cause people go on and on. Once again, these are one star reviews. What you get is a pathetic, unlikable, self-destructive protagonist who selfishly and stupidly puts both her and her children's lives in danger multiple times because she is incapable of managing her life independently of a man. Oh, independently of a man? Oh, okay. <laughs> wow. And this person, I don't know what their gender identity is because they don't have a picture and their name on here is just some initials, but this woman is recently divorced. So she's trying to navigate without her husband. That's not saying she doesn't know how to do things without a man. I mean, once again, when you get into these mysteries, especially like the cozy mystery types, all these people are amateur sleuths and trying to be detectives. So they're all doing stupid stuff. Don't read this kind of book if that's not what you want. <sighs> and then they ended it with, I may be in the minority here, but I hated these characters with the exception perhaps of Vero and I hated this novel. <laughs> wow. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Everyone's entitled to their opinion, but I disagree with the whole not being able to do it without a man. Okay. There's another one star review. I didn't finish this book. I got about a third of the way through and was so annoyed by the main character that I skimmed to the end for the last couple chapters and called it good enough. The ending set it up for a sequel, but I'll obviously be skipping it. I hope you did. See, I just don't do that DNF and I'm not going to review it unless I got like, even though I have books that I've gotten like 50% of the way in, I've DNF'd it, still didn't review it. I just talk about it on my channel. I just don't think it's fair to give it one star when you didn't read the whole thing. That's just me. Okay, someone else says, major unpopular opinion alert. In my sweetest Southern accent, this was the dumbest damn thing I have ever read. What in the ever loving buttered biscuits? Okay, I get you having to suspend belief, that's fine, but still, this was plain ludicrous. 
okay. You do have to suspend belief, disbelief, belief. I mean, I don't know. I just, this to me was just a fun book. Just go along for the ride. Don't take it so seriously, people. Just a mystery, cozy mystery book. Look, I'm more biased when it comes to mystery, thriller, suspense type of books. They're not meant to be taken seriously. I just don't. It's just for fun. So, I mean, I'm usually a little more lenient with my reviews of mystery thriller books because again, they're meant to be fun. I'll at least give you two stars for keeping me entertained at least. All right, moving on. All right. All right, we get into some dangerous territory. This was my favorite book of 2021. Project Hail Mary by Andy Weir. <sighs> Let's do it. It's bad, bad, bad book. And the only thing that kept me from throwing it away was Ray Porter's lively narration. Yes, I agree. I enjoyed the audiobook. But even he didn't prevent me from abandoning the book with an hour left. Then a few hours in, I realized the prose isn't going to get better and there will be absolutely no plot apart from the repetitive cycle of something breaks, Grace fixes it, something goes wrong, Grace sorts it, breaks it, Grace fixes it. Once again, just put it down, just DNF it and move on. You're not hurting anyone. Okay, someone else said, I was gonna give it a higher rating, but Jesus Christ, what an awful ending. Absolutely insulting to the time put in to read it. So because of the ending, you gave it one star. That's not fair. I don't think that's fair. If I don't like the ending of a book, I just take off a star. Like now you got bumped down to a four. If you were at a four, now you're at a three. They took off four whole stars because of the ending. Wow. Okay. Wow, a lot of DNFs. People didn't finish. Ah! DNF 40%. I tried. I really tried. Wow, what a waste. Here's another one, insane drivel. I think the main character is supposed to be endearing, supposed to be funny, but he's just obnoxiously annoying and the entire story is unbelievable because he's so poorly written and out of place. <sighs> now, I did the audiobook because of the science part of it. It's just hard for me to read it. It just like puts me back to being in school or something. I just don't grasp it. But the audiobook was well done and I think reading it, people clearly were entertained. I did not think the main character was obnoxious. I also liked the main character in The Martian though. People thought he was ridiculous, but I like Andy Weir's humor, I guess. Works for me. I know that's a complaint people had, they just don't like his humor. Then, I don't know if you read The Martian, but don't read this one. But anyway, someone else finished, but did not like this one at all. Okay, they didn't explain themselves. I officially give up. I know I am in the minority here and many people like the book. It's not because of the plot, but I can't stand the writing any longer. What is the deal? I like it. <laughs> I like Andy Weir's writing. I don't get it. I don't get it. Clearly, I just don't understand some of these people's opinions. Let's move on. <laughs> okay, on to another horror book. Um, this one, I do know some of the controversial opinions because I read some of the reviews on Goodreads when I wrapped up the book. So anyway, I'll get into it because I can comment more on the things that I know people said. And I'm speaking of 12 Nights at Rotter House by J.W. Auker. Here we go. Someone said, God damn it, this was a five out of five star read until the nth hour twist made it clear. It's just some dude's racist cuckold fantasy. Tricked me into thinking it would be a regular haunted house story. Gross. Now, once again, there are two characters in this book. They're friends and one is a black man. And I know people felt like the author was racist. I did not get that as a black person. I did not get that. I was happy the character was black. Just it was, you know, cool to see. And I thought he was written in a positive way. I don't feel like what happened in the story was because of his race. That's just me. I don't look for negative things. I don't look for race. It's just not how I roll. So I didn't see that. Again, I don't think so. Here's another one. Strange sexualization of violence followed quickly by disturbing sexual content and overt racism. Um, I did think there was some weird sexual stuff. I mentioned that in my review. I did a review, I will link it. I will link it here. I mean, like I said, those things I was kind of like, mm, What's up with you, J.W. Walker? But the racist thing, I didn't agree. So I already said that. But again, they're not even commenting on anything to do with the writing or the characters. I guess that was just a done deal for them. But with the sexual stuff that was weird, I took off a star or half a star and I still enjoyed the book. Okay, clearly me. Okay, this person actually listed why they gave me one star. I like this. Reasons for the one star review. I found the character to be lacking in depth someone who's talking about something besides the racism. The dialogue was less than believable. I disagree. I like the dialogue. They had this little banter back and forth where they talked about films, horror films. I thought that was very believable. I enjoyed it anyway. The writing was not to my taste. That's more personal preference than anything though. I like that you said that. I still don't get why you gave me one star. The story needed more verisimilitude. What? Anyway, the ending was foreshadowed-ish 
but some of the plot points leading up to it felt shoehorned. There's more, but other reviews have covered it. Okay, um, I don't think you should take off a, or give it one star because the ending was foreshadowed. That doesn't make the book bad. And they gave the reasons why they gave it one star and I still don't think it deserved one star from what they said, so. Okay, I'm gonna end on this one. There's a good book in here somewhere. It's just buried in an overly talky narrative that undermines any of the spooky parts. Plus the ending was so easy to guess. Once again, I didn't guess the ending, so guess it's just me. I was surprised by the twist at the ending. I enjoyed all the talky bits. I was rushing back to this book. It just drew me in. I don't know what it was. I liked the writing, so that's me. Hmm, moving on. Okay, so. Two more to go. And these two will probably be painful. This one I just read recently, I think in November. It was the highlight of my November. One of my new favorite books, one of my new favorite authors, Recursion by Blake Crouch. Let's just do it. This person says, well, I think the problem is that it's just me trying to figure this story out. I must admit I'm confused and feel somewhat idiotic that I didn't love this book and had an extremely hard time staying on track and reading this book. I would put it down, forget about it, pick it up and start to read again, get more confused, put it down and went like this for days. I don't think it's fair to give a book one star because you didn't understand it. Like if I don't understand a book first of all, I'm probably gonna put it down because I'm confused. So if you put it down and came back and didn't understand it, you should have just DNF'd it and moved on. Learn to DNF like me, it's okay, it doesn't hurt. Just put it down, move on. Don't leave one star reviews, it's not fair. <laughs> this one said, two stars for the first half, zero for the second. Awful, implausible, repetitive derivative. It was not awful, that's all you have is awful. Implausible, once again, it's a sci-fi novel. It's not supposed to be realistic. This person said, not my type of book. I don't buy the ending and it was a real bummer time getting there not your type of book. <sighs> I mean, hey, if that's what's fine for a one star review, I guess. You are bringing these books down by just you not understanding it or it's not your type of book. You're hurting the reviews because I don't think that's fair. That's to me like when you go on Amazon or any site where you buy things and somebody gives something one star because it arrived late or the box was crushed or something. That has nothing to do with the product. It's not fair. <laughs> okay, someone DNF'd it, which I guess people do still review when they DNF. I do not I already said this, I don't get it, but they said DNF to page 173. They did get pretty far, so I'll give them that. I can't do it. Do not take this as a sign to not read it though. This was definitely just me not enjoying anything having to do with time travel. Oh my God, I just said this. If you don't like time travel, <gasps> why do people feel they have to review? You don't have to review, you know. You could just talk to your friends about it or something, get on a forum. <sighs> I don't know, because it seems like a lot of these reviews are people just don't, they didn't get it. Not your cup of tea. Sounds like that's what it is for this book. It's just not a lot of people's cup of tea. I don't think that warrants one star reviews, but that's me. Let's move on to my last book. Now, you're probably saying, I know you're not gonna do this video and not talk about John Mars. Yes, I am. Yes, I am. <laughs> you know I love my John Mars books, so uh, I didn't want to, but I was like, I have to. I'm gonna bear it. And I'm gonna do the one, as I said, by John Mars. So let's just do it. Do I need some tissue? Ah, this person says DNF. Once again, one star DNFs. Anyway, I don't know why, but I simply cannot stand this book. That is not a review. You didn't explain yourself. You don't have a reason. Let's move on. This person said, this book is just one cliche after another. Firstly, it claims to be science-based, but the science doesn't make sense. How just two people would contain one specific singular trait in DNA that no other people in the world have just makes no sense. Why stop at two? Surely it would be percentages or scaling matches because that is what this book is about. It's John Mars's idea. Why can't you just go with it? That's the whole point. You're only matched with one person. That's what it says on the synopsis. If you had an issue with that, don't pick up the book. I don't understand. People don't read synopsis or you read it and say, I'm gonna read it anyway. I understand. Like when I picked up the one, I didn't think I was gonna be here for the romance. So when the romance came along, I was like, we just gonna have to do it. But it didn't bother me as much. But if you already don't like the whole premise of the book, why are you gonna pick it up, read it or go further? Anyway, this person says, all the characters are two dimensional. They have no depth, neither have any conscience. Irritating douchebags. You won't believe how many times I wanted to strangle each of them. We clearly were reading a different book because I was actually surprised I liked all the characters. You know, some of them more than others because each chapter is a different character and I'm, some people I was like, oh, I can't wait to get back to them. But I mean, 
with the exception of one. But I was enjoying all the characters. Okay. It says, duh, life is not all about romance. Our lives are not incomplete without soulmates. Some of us have better things to do than cry for their soulmates. That was not the point of this book. I don't, I, okay. <laughs> I don't even know what to say. Um, wow. This person just gave it one star and said, I must advise reading a sample of this book first before downloading it. How is that a review? What does that have to do with the book? Or what does that say about the book? This one says, this was a great idea for a book. Writing was poor in places and it went into unbelievable too many times to count. And on the last page, well, meh, just a big fat meh. I disagree. I love John Mars writing, as you already know. You skim chapters in the end. The ending is where it just really gets like flipping pages for me anyway. This is when things just really start to hit the fan. <sighs> this person just put, nah, man. Thank you for your insight. I swear. I read a lot of these bad reviews these people just like you really are not offering anything you have nothing to say let's end on this one a near perfect concept a dna based algorithm that matches compatible couples executed so spectacularly poorly i could applaud paper thin characters strung along by plot twists that would make a telenovela blush a resounding one star <laughs> i just don't even know what to say Paper thin characters, I mean, this is not one of those books that gets really in depth into characters. If that's what you want, that's not what you get in here. But again, this is more of a thriller. So once again, with thriller mystery books, you can't be expecting too much character development. It's not what we're here for. And also make a telenovela blush, I guess. I, I This is kind of soap opery, but that's what I liked about it. That's what I think the people who liked it loved about it. This clearly wasn't your thing, so whatever. We'll just end on that. <laughs> All right, ladies and gentlemen. So we are at the end of my torture session. I hope you found this enjoyable. It's hard to search through these comments. People, some people write pages and I'm not gonna read all that. And then some people, as you see, write a sentence. So it's hard to gather things. Maybe the one star reviews weren't the best for me to read, but I was like, we're gonna go to the bottom. And clearly people just don't really have their thoughts together when they give these reviews. But anyway, <laughs> that is my takeaway. As I said, this is all in fun. So. My main thing is just that it's all a personal taste because people said things where I'm like, clearly I read a different book. So again, it's personal opinion, personal preference, personal taste, all that good stuff. So anyway, um, let me know in the comments down below if you also did not like any of these books that I loved. It's all right, I can take it. Or you can tell me a funny story about you reading some comments that were negative that you disagreed with or just what you think about people rating books that they DNF because I know people have talked about that and I think unless you read a good portion, you shouldn't be reviewing it. But you know, just you can just weigh in on this topic all together. And if you don't have a comment, you can leave me a thumbs down emoji or a sad face, crying face, because that's what I'm gonna go do after I turn the camera off. <laughs> no. <laughs> and as always, links to these books will be below as well as ways you can support my channel. You can always buy me coffee, tea, donate for me to buy more eBooks, new releases, so that I can review those for you. And uh, yeah, I think that's it. So until next time, snuggle up in your hideaway with a good book, like the ones I think are good on this list. <laughs> Unplug as much as possible, be kind to all kind, and I will see you in the next video. Bye.